Hi guys, so this is an online simulation that I'm going to use with you here um, to show you uh, just the basic factors that affect the properties of a gas. Okay, I could do like real life demos if we were in class and I had all my equipment, but we're just going to have to be okay with uh, digital stuff for now. Okay, so um, here we go. So we've got a container here with a thermometer, a pressure gauge. We can heat or cool the container. We can also pump some gas in here. Okay, so I pump some gas in here. You can see we're starting to measure some things. I'm going to click here on the width so I can see exactly the numerical width of this container, uh, as well as a collision counter. Um, I can count at any point here how many collisions there are with the gas particles against the walls of that container. And I can change the amount of particles here. I can decrease or increase the amount of particles that I want. Okay. And I can also have different types of particles in there. Okay. If I would like to. Excuse me. So um, let's look at some variables that affect the behavior of gases. Okay. So first of all, I can heat up these gases. So you see that temperature there on top uh, with the K, I'm going to explain what that is, is increasing. And if you notice, the gases are moving faster, especially those tiny little ones. They really, they're really moving faster on average. Some of them are still moving slower. If I cool it down, as you notice, overall, they all start on average slowing down. There's still some fast ones, okay, but on average, they're slowing down. You have two different units of temperature here. You have Celsius, which is what you used to, but there's another one that we're going to use from now on as well called Kelvin. Okay. Um, the Kelvin scale allows us to measure the coldest temperature possible in the universe as zero. Okay. So zero Kelvin is called absolute zero. It's the coldest temperature possible in the universe. And at that temperature, all molecular motion stops. Okay, um, I don't think this simulation allows me to bring the temperature down to zero Kelvin, but that's never really been observed. Uh, I think one Kelvin is the coldest that anything has ever been observed. But if particles were to completely stop, even like vibrating, okay, because solids are still vibrating in place, that would be zero Kelvin. Okay, but you get the idea here uh, that the coldest you go, the, the slower you get. Okay, awesome. So I'm going to start warming this up again here. The next thing that we can manipulate as well is the volume. Okay, I can drag this thing, make the volume bigger. You can see that visually and numerically. Or we can make the volume smaller. Okay, and I do have a lid there as well. Okay. Um, and then you have the pressure gauge here, which is measured in atmospheres, or I can also measure in kilopascals. Okay. Those are just two different units of uh, measurement. So I'm going to increase the temperature here a little bit. And as you see, as I increase the temperature, you see that the pressure is going up. Okay. Why would that be? Okay. Well, here is the thing. Pressure, when a gas exerts pressure on something, the way that it exerts pressure is by colliding with the walls of that container if that gas is contained. The gas from the atmosphere it exerts pressure by just colliding against my skin. Okay. Um, but gases in the container, they're, every time they hit the wall of that container, they're exerting pressure. Okay. So the more collisions that you have, the more uh, pressure you're exerting. Or the more energetic those collisions are, the more pressure you're, you're exerting. So when you're increasing the temperature, because those particles are moving faster, each collision has more energy in it and also you get more collisions because they're moving faster okay so just as a way for you to see that our sample period here i think that p stands for pico like 10 picoseconds which is a very very small number basically um, so we are at 340 kelvin so let's see how many collisions we get okay in 10 picoseconds i think this is what the p stands for so we get 124 wall collisions and a pressure of around 16.3-ish atmospheres. If I raise the temperature, let's try to get to 500, which is okay, 523. How many wall collisions do I have now? Okay, 
I have 180 instead of 124. I have 180 wall collisions. And the pressure is now hovering around 25 atmospheres, so from 16 to 25. So you see the greater the pressure, more kinetic energy, more movement, more collisions, which cause more pressure. Okay? Um, well, what happens if I add more particles, a greater number of particles? So I added more of the light particles. Okay? You see that the pressure went up. If I measure the number of the collisions, I should get more than 180, and I do, I get 264. More particles or more moles of particles, okay, means more collisions, more pressure. All right, what about volume, okay? If I expand the volume, okay, the pressure decreases. So look again. If say I'm going to bring this volume to 10 nanometers, pressure is 35.8 ish okay and how many collisions do we have we have about 282 collisions with a pressure of about 35. well what happens if the volume goes up to 15 like real close to my head there okay pressure went down let's measure our wall collisions and it is 221, which is lower than I think it was 280. Okay, so what's happening there? The more volume that a gas has, it's going to expand. So it has more space. It's going to hit the walls less often because there's more space to move around. If I lower the volume, there's less space. So they're going to end up colliding with the walls of the container more often. So as volume goes up, pressure goes down. That's called inversely proportional. Okay? Inversely proportional. The other case was different. As temperature went up, pressure went up. As temperature went down, pressure went down. That's directly proportional. So directly proportional is up and down like this. Okay? Inversely proportional is one goes up, the other one goes down. Okay? So um, that's it for just a quick introduction, a quick little digital demo here on the um, factors that affect the behavior of gases.